thanks so much, uh, David. That was just uh, terrific, and um, I feel like uh, um, really sets us off for um, this day today in a beautiful way. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes, not long at all, uh, to just share a little bit of the learning. Um, uh, some of you, uh, many of you sent emails to us with some sort of key learning. Um, and um, it actually gets to a little bit of Jason's question, a little bit of um, Luis, you talking about being nomadic. And um, I, I, uh, and I had the opportunity uh, to, in the first cohort, actually visit all of the theaters and the playwrights, except my flight was canceled um, to OSF uh, three times. Um, but I, um, so I <laughs> met uh, with um, Bill and Louise here, but I did, try, I did try, I just want you to know. And, um, uh, and so I had a chance to, to meet with all the, the uh, playwrights and theaters. I had a chance to have really ongoing conversations with many of you. Um, and I wanted to just say a couple of things from my perspective and then share a couple of things that you shared, which I put on my phone because I didn't uh, have time to print this morning. So um, the first being that um, this idea that the playwright is nomadic, um, in some ways when we uh, all sat together and conceived of this program, um, it seemed like a no-brainer, right? So it seemed like the most obvious thing in the world. What a writer wouldn't want a salary and health insurance? And actually, it wasn't the no-brainer in quite the way that we had anticipated it would be. Um, and I really want us to talk about that, especially for the cohort uh, that is new to this, that in fact, there's a reason, and, and also, I think one of the things that David's pointing to this morning is that there's been a dysfunction in our field. And so the intervention into a dysfunction uh, sometimes leads to um, the revelation that there's been dysfunction uh, and that, um, that, that there's work to be done to get past that, right? And so the biggest thing that I uh, had an opportunity to see, and I know um, uh, those of us, uh, Melon and myself, as we uh, had talked about this, was that there was immediately, it didn't go as smoothly as we thought it might. And, and it was around the idea that um, playwrights have prided themselves on their nomad-like lifestyle, their freelance lifestyle. They have intentionally not chosen, in many ways, to be parts of institutions. And, um, and that, it, that artistic directors have prided themselves on the fact that they're parts of institutions and that they've given up things in their career to be parts of institutions. And they were also um, asking the question, uh, what was it to uh, supervise a playwright, or was um, supervision actually the right word? Uh, is it just a colleague? Is it a staff member? What does it really mean to be a staff member? And so a lot of really, um, I think, hard questions uh, arose from that. I, I know, I don't think, Jack, you would mind me saying that in your case, it was really um, a complicated thing around what it was to bring somebody in in parity with all the other staff members and how that would happen. And so um, we, we, so it was, um, not a bad start, but it was. There were just a lot of questions that were raised about um, that relationship, and what uh, I saw from my vantage point was that the, even though the playwright and the artistic director in most cases had um, long-term uh, connections, and that's why they had been selected for the grant, they had never been in this particular relationship with each other before. So um, to acknowledge that this is a new um, relationship is, I think, a thing that we didn't. Uh, you know, adequately prepare everyone to consider ahead of time. So I just put that out there um, for, uh, um, for you all uh, to think a little bit about, especially the new folks. And then the other big learning um, from uh, just my vantage point, especially after yesterday, I had a lot of learning yesterday, which was that these residencies, the as, as especially as the first cohort was reporting out, that these residencies took a lot of time to unfold and to germinate and to grow. And so what I've seen is where there was like this kind of moment of like, what are we doing? That moment of what are we doing lasted in some cases a year or 18 months or two years that suddenly in this last year, there's been a cohesion around the residencies and particularly for those of you who are here as you've renewed and incredible things are coming out of that out of the time, right? So, um, and that's been um, really interesting to see, so that these residencies take time to unfold, that we will all need time, um, and um, the new cohort will need a particular sense of time, and the renewing cohort will need another kind of time to see what the next evolution is. The um, uh, other thing I wanted to just talk about was um, 
um, the way in which you all have reported back to us um, about your learning. And what, when, when I went around and, and spoke with all of you at the, at the get-go, the thing that we all talked about um, a few years back was that there would be three kinds of level of opportunity for transformation with a residency like this. That there would be an opportunity, obviously, for personal transformation. What would it mean to a writer to have the kind of stability and, and connection and uh, commitment to production that the residency would um, provide? Um, what would it mean for an artistic director to have a kind of partner um, in a resident playwright, and how would that be personally transforming? That there would also be um, institutional transformation. What would it mean to bring an artist on staff, and how would that be both bumpy and provocative and enriching to an institution? Uh, I remember um, five minutes into um, the, the announcement of the first residency, uh, cohort, uh, someone on a staff of one of the theaters tweeting out, uh, I'm an artist on staff, why can't I have a residency? Completely reasonable question, actually, right? And so, um, so that, that there would be implications to the institutions for what it would mean to bring somebody on specifically as an artist, given that most of our theaters are staffed with all kinds of artists, right, doing all kinds of things. Um, and then the third kind of transformation that we talked about was um, transformation beyond the, the individual and the institutional, what could happen in our communities um, uh, because of this work. I think the thing that kind of blew my mind yesterday as, as things were unfolding was just the incredible way in which um, there has been community transformation as a result of these, uh, that all, every single theater found a way to take the opportunity and to expand its impact beyond the personal and the institutional. And I think that's, um, and that that sometimes happened in the last year, in the last six months, and the, but that all of the um, uh, residencies have done that in some way. So I feel like we really, uh, we hit on that. I wanted to share a few things uh, that I have in super tiny type, which I'm, I'm gonna try to read. Um, a few things that uh, you um, all shared. Uh, I'm not gonna attribute names, although you may know who, but I just wanted to share some things you said about your own learning um, that I, the, I just pulled some things that I thought might be uh, helpful. Um, the biggest thing, uh, and this is in the under, I kind of put them under personal, um, communal, and then, um, or institutional and communal uh, learning. This is under personal transformation. The biggest thing that I have learned and am learning is how much I have to learn as an American citizen born into twin privileges of our country's biases of class and race. As a professional charged with the curating of an annual conversation with our community, I need to understand fully the vantage point from which I view the world, and I need to listen deeply and without ego to the lessons of others' vantage points. And all of that was in my head as an intellectual idea and lives for me now in the messy and vulnerable space of an emotional reality. Um, that's what it meant to bring a playwright on staff uh, for that uh, artistic director. Um, another piece of learning, the thing I was most afraid of losing, my artistic focus, not finding kindred spirits, having to spend inordinate amounts of time explaining the complexities of race in America, not only did not materialize, but uh, have ceased to worry me. Uh, let me just expand my little screen. Um, my, uh, and, then under, uh, and then more under personal transformation, my residency has clarified for me the why of every play I write and allowed me to take bigger risks and chances with theatricality and with the heart and reach of the play. Uh, also writing for the production uh, has made me a better writer. It's taken away all sense of the mystique of an artistic process and made me feel useful, like I have a job, one that feels important. Um, and then again, uh, one more under personal transformation. I think I learned how to be a producer and feel empowered to contribute to all aspects of the development and production of a play of mine. This included the design of my own development process and working to hire the most important collaborators. I participated in the entire design process and was involved in marketing, fundraising, and bringing in new audiences. I felt like an equal partner in the process of bringing the piece to fruition, which incidentally, uh, was a major formal risk for me. Um, and so I think that's both uh, personal and institutional, right? I'm sure that institution was significantly changed by um, a playwright entering into the process in that uh, kind of holistic way. Um, another in the world of institutional transformation, humility. I've gotten a crash course 
in how hard it is to run a theater, how hard everyone works to keep the doors open, and how hard the staff works to maintain the level of excellence that I see every day at the theater, sitting in, per sitting in season planning meetings and understanding how much goes into picking the seven plays that will represent an artistic vision and also fit into the budget and also represent our community, our artists, and also challenge our audiences. And also, it's been overwhelming, but in a critical way, I am both despondent over the challenges that face every individual artist who hopes to have a lasting career in theater and also honored to have that in my life, at least for the moment. The experience of being on staff has made me so humble to be a playwright. It hasn't made it easier to write, but it has made it more important that I continue to write. Um, and then um, another insight, another institutional insight, I learned that there simply is no substitute for producing the work of a resident writer. Um, and then uh, another um, institutional insight, it's made me want to incorporate more artists more fully into every aspect of our organizational life. Another, the playwright's active participation in all aspects of our organizational presenting, developing, marketing, financing, gro uh, growth has added a new element and thought process uh, to all of our discussions. We now have... Uh, Hold on, let me give that, get my, there we go. We now have an artist sitting at the table bringing up new ideas and offering critical perspectives we may have overlooked in the past. Um, and then, um, uh, then, yeah, and so I, I feel like, um, uh, and then the community piece of it, I just kind of wanted to leave a provocation there because most of you really covered that yesterday, so I didn't want to repeat that. Most of the stuff that you wrote down were things that you said yesterday. Um, but the community piece of it, the, the, the moment in my career, I think, that has most wowed me came out of a playwright residency. And it was actually out of the first um, kind of uh, uh, pilot residency program that David uh, uh, headed at, uh, at Arena Stage. Um, and it came from Karen Zacharias, who uh, David mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, Karen, when we were at um, Arena, and actually Karen, when we had our very first cohort meeting um, a few years ago, um, actually uh, was at that meeting, I think, via Skype. And um, she um, really uh, created, in my mind, like the model of like the ultimately great playwright residency. And she had um, these uh, development funds, as you all have development funds, and she decided that with her, some of her money, she used some of it for things like developing a play, but with some of her money, what she wanted to do was bring a bunch of Latino theater artists and put them in a room and just have a deep conversation for two days and see what happened. And we talked about that, and uh, it was kind of an awkward time. We were, we were in the process of leaving Arena to come here, and I was like, oh, God, Karen, do you have to do that? And she's like, yes, I absolutely have to do that. Um, and so uh, she, um, she insisted, and, I, and, and, and she said, and it's just, I said, well, who, would, you know, who, who do you want to bring? And she's just people that I've been interested in, like people that I've been interested in who I'm curious what they have to say. And um, so we said, we said yes, we did that. It was gonna be, I think we invited 15 people and eight showed up. Uh, and those eight um, sat in a room um, with uh, HowlRound um, for really, I, I don't think we were together more than you know, a 24, 36 hour stretch. And they um, created a thing that is now called the Latino Theater Commons. And in the, uh, in the um, convening, they said they wanted to do uh, four things. Um, they wanted to do a major gathering of Latino theater artists, uh, one that had not had, had hap not happened for 25 years. They wanted to do that. Um, they wanted to create this convening and just create a massive group of Latino writers in a room and see what would come of that. That they wanted to, um, uh, uh, Jose Luis Valenzuela was in the room and he wanted to do a big festival of Latino plays. He, and he was calling it an encuentro. He wanted to do an encuentro, an encounter. And then uh, Lisa Portez, they were just building this new um, space that DePaul wanted to do a thing, and she already had a name for it. She wanted to do, everybody had all their ideas, right? She wanted to do a carnival of um, new plays and read new plays. And then um, uh, um, uh, Tzalak Rivas was there, and he said, I want to do an online journal. I know the name of it. It's called Cafe Onda. Um, we were like, oh, well, you know, everybody has like a plan. And so um, uh, we uh, started that conversation. HowlRound provided some infrastructure. Um, we can now say after last summer that every single one of those things happened. Every single one of those things happened. Um, that 
for uh, someone who's had a 20-year career in the theater, that uh, just has blown my mind. It has blown my mind, um, and it came directly out of um, a visionary moment by a playwright in a playwright residency. And so uh, I just want, and, and that movement is still going strong. Uh, they're having their next convening in uh, New York in November. Many other things are cropping, uh, coming up and, and, and uh, uh, growing out of that. So I feel like um, one of the things we're going to challenge you to, and I think in, in many ways this is what David was saying as well, is really challenging you as a cohort, what's the, what's the, what is this investment? I feel like when you think about investment to impact, Karen um, really gave us a, a, a sense of investment to impact. So um, that's really all I have uh, in terms of just a little report out, the learning, and how far off time am I? Oh no, I'm off. Great, perfectly timed. Um, yeah. Pardon? Uh, yeah, you, you, yes you can. <laughs> to tie it back to the documentation, because one of the things that's different in this round, and the playwrights all, um, or and you guys all talked about it a little bit, we're gonna talk about it more today. Um, the responsibility for documentation now falls in your hands. And something that was special about that with Karen was that you guys were on site with them. HowlRound was embedded with the, uh, American Voices New Play Institute, which was at Arena Stage, which is what the five residencies were all a part of. Um, HowlRound is not embedded in your theater. <laughs> They're not sitting next to you, but the infrastructure is there and the documentation process is part of this. And so I would say, as you use your development funds or as you participate in these residency activities and things are happening, uh, bringing HowlRound into the conversation is a way to nationalize, to uh, bring to the forefront, to create movement um, and organize in ways that it's very difficult to do in isolation in your individual institutions. And so um, I'm putting in a pitch for really trying to be in communication to the extent that it's not super onerous, but is going to benefit and try to move the needle the way that David was talking about earlier. Um, it's helpful for all of us, it's helpful for the learning, and enormous things can come out of it. The LTC is a huge movement now. And it's extraordinary to see that out of one conversation can come something so tremendous. So um, it's my plea to you to try to keep the conversation, um, lift the conversation out of your individual institutional context and into the commons. Thank you. Um, any, any quick question come up from that? I'm gonna keep us moving unless there's just like a, you know, quick thought or question. Yeah, Peter. Yes. That's exactly what we're going to do then. Yep, thanks, Peter. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, great. So next up, we're going to do just a little shift uh, in, um, not, not really a shift, but 